You said you're leaving? Mm. Where are you going? It's in Nashville. What's in Nashville? I just love it there. Really? Yeah. That's beautiful. I've never been. Like, when I was a kid, I remember it was always, like, one of those musical spots that, like, mm. you know, you pin out as a music fan as a kid, but it was yeah. somewhere I've never been. Well, I, yeah, I, I went to um, I went to college there. Um, like, I graduated last May. Um, yeah, and I just, like, fell in love with it. It's, like, easily my favorite city ever. What do you like about it's, it? It's, it's just so dope. It's just, like, um, I don't know. I... I, I I think it's like the perfect. Oh, I, I, I gotta go less hard with the P. I just, I just, I just like popped. Perfect. Like, it's a, the perfect. Um, yeah, but it, it's. I like it a lot because I think for me, like, I'm definitely an individual that that prioritizes uh, like duality of things and like balance, you know. Mm. And like to me, Nashville is the perfect balance between. It's a place that has a lot of creative individuals, a really vibrant creative community, but it's not as like overkill art, artsy, like art mode as like LA is. I could totally you know see that. Saying? Yeah. Like, Cause you, I need a breather. Like, I, you know, like a lot of my friends in Nashville, like I'm really tapped into the creative community there and just really, t really tapped into like everyone. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, even just like a lot of my friends, like I love hanging out with like, people that are not musicians or like not creative oh, yeah. people like because it's 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 nice you know like it's cool it's like a breath of fresh air yeah yeah it's I, I like that a lot so I think Nashville it's really cool for me because it's like you can be in a creative community and you can totally be with very creative individuals and, and kind of do all these things but you can like so choose when to turn it off yeah which is really nice which is like my time in LA I've lived here you know for about a year um and really, like, my whole reason for coming here was to, like, make my new album. And then I was kind of thinking, like, okay, when I finish the album, that's when I'll leave. Um, that's, like, everyone's pro thought process, I feel like, it was yeah. mine, too. No, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's that's what happened. Um, it was, like, but, it's uh, the whole getting, get out process. Mm, yeah, it's, like, I'm going to go for a particular purpose. And to circle back to Nashville, I feel bad because I've referenced this, this conversation in, like, four interviews. But it, I, I think that balance between, like, you know, if you work in music or you're a musician or your whole life is music it's so difficult to find things outside of your life that aren't music related. And that mm. was something that I think I realized like recently I had a conversation with a friend of mine, we were getting lunch and he, um, he's been like in music for like a super, super long time. Yeah. He's just worked in music for ever, like over 10, like I think almost 15 years. And, um, I asked him, I was like, how do you like keep that level of longevity in this stuff? Mm. And he looked me in the eyes and he was all like, what do you do outside of music? And I had no answer for him. And I realized yeah. at that moment I was like, Dude, like, what do I do outside of running a music media company? It's like, I make music for right. fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I play music with my friends. I hang out with my friends who are musicians. And I realize I have no life outside of that world. And I think LA yeah. can really, like, contribute to that. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, it's that's just a really important thing um, for anyone, you know, no, no matter what you do. I think kind of diversity, like, in your lifestyle and the activities that you choose to participate in, it's really important to have, a, a like, a well-rounded yeah group of stuff that you like to do you know and I, I think if uh if you just put all your eggs in one basket in terms of your lifestyle and what you do and, and whatever i think you're kind of setting yourself up just to get burnt out yeah that makes perfect sense i i could totally see nashville like being a place like that i i would ask you though like because I, I i suppose i could see a lot of places being like that that are in la you know i could see new york being like that but having a better balance and i would even ask you like coming from a place like chicago yeah. that has like a big very rich musical history and outside of that there's a lot of music happening there now sure did you kind of have that balance there because you know there's a there's a ton of music in chicago but it's mm -hmm. not like a music place like la is yeah um i think chicago in in a in 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 a musical lens is like really interesting um because like i was talking to my dad about this actually he was telling me kind of like he was sort of explaining to me just you know because he grew up like in the city and he kind of you know has just he's, he's, he's never lived anywhere else um and he was kind of explaining to me how like chicago is a very interesting place because <clears throat> it 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 has like very distinct like eras for stuff mm. if that makes sense like you know like at one point like things stop and begin again yeah and and it's kind of chicago has this sort of um kind of attribute of like when it's on for something like it's so on and when it's off it's so off like 
you know, he was kind of saying like, yeah, like there was a time, you know, like if it was in the eighties or in the nineties or whatever, that we were like, we as in Chicago, that the Chicago was like the fashion capital. You know really? I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like shit like that. Or, you know, if you think about like the early 2010s, um, Chicago, was all the hip hop coming out yeah, of Chicago. Chi yeah, it was like you know Chance and and all this stuff. And Keith, and, and and Chief Keith, and all, yeah, all Smino and all these things. And and now it's like in terms of like innovative kind of buzzworthy hip hop artists, there aren't really any in Chicago at this time. That at least that I'm aware of. Like when I think of right now, the most vibrant. That's interesting because like underground hip hop scene. Like I think of New York right now. For sure, I agree. Um, and it's just kind of like yeah, it has these really like. It's so good for something un until it's not. Um, so I think just to kind of go full circle, like the Chicago kind of musical whatever and like the balance and, and stuff. Like I never really was a was a I was never really a part of like the Chicago music scene. Like I, I was, but only for a really short time. Um, was there a scene for like your kind of music out there, you think? I, it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say just because like I started this project the summer before I left to go to college in Nashville. Uh -huh. So I just never really was like, there. like all my formative time, like both of my two albums that are out right now, like I made them both in Nashville, Mo mostly, you know? Um, like, yeah, I, I just never really was like plugged in just cause you know, the last period of time that I was like a full time Illinois resident, you know, I wasn't really, making i wasn't well, i was making music but i didn't like have this project like full force so. yeah um so yeah it's interesting that you say that because that's one thing i think about a lot it's like it's really funny that like there can be so much happening musically in your city or like where you're from but you can have nothing to do with it and you're like an outsider looking in like i felt that yeah. way for a long time in like the bay area music scene like but it's also there is something beautiful about it i think because in i think music scenes do a good job at, and i think there's there's like a difference between gatekeeping and then, like, earning your way into a scene by, like, giving something. Like, I don't even want to say, like, proving that you care. It's, it's almost, like, hard to put into words. But it's, like, yeah. providing something of value, yeah. I suppose, you know? I think there is something that can be, like, valuable in that. But it's, like, you know, like, for me, for example, like, there were so many bands and, like, even, like, rappers and other musicians that I really, really looked up to, like, in the Bay Area music scene when I was, like, a little kid. And, and I remember thinking, like, damn. I want to be a part of that for sure. But it's so strange because it's like, how do you take the first step to like get into that world? You know? Yeah. It's a really, really bizarre thing. Yeah. So this interview, just to like some context, yeah. I love so much how much I love how like spontaneous this was because yeah. literally this is the first time we've ever met. I uh, M Mario hit you up like, four hours ago and and you were talking about how like you never really check your instagram messages but like we just happened to catch you on a day where you were yeah and it, it's cool like mario put me on your music and i become i became a fan like through him and it's just really really like i almost love that it came about this way because it feels so much of like the antithesis of what we try to like preach on this show yeah it's like mm -hmm. spontaneous conversations in the moment yeah about like whatever your headspace is and like where you're at and it, i don't think i've ever having, had an interview like come about this quickly <laughs> yeah i mean no yeah um i think just yeah sometimes that's just kind of what i was saying earlier uh -huh. i was just like looking at my calendar and i was like dude i i yeah like i i can't i can't do this if it's not today so yeah <laughs> let's, let's just go um and talk for a little bit i love that are yeah. you somebody who like kind of has that mindset in terms of like your day-to-day -day life and the way you plan out the things that you do like are you somebody who has spontaneous by nature or do you find yourself like mm. planning out the things that you do in your career on a day-to-day -day basis um i would say it's definitely a, a little bit of both mm -hmm. i would say it's probably more the planning category than the than the spontaneous one um, just cause I feel like if, if just a lot of the things that I do and a lot of the things that I, you know, have done or want to do or whatever, like they're just things that require a lot of planning, you know, like at least if you want to like do them well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would say I'm pretty spontaneous though, like in a personal sense mm -hmm. and just like, just me as just like a, a, a guy. Um, Yeah. I think it's so interesting to like work and exist and live in like music mm. because there's a certain level. <laughs> I mean, I learned this the hard way moving to LA. There's a certain level at which like maintaining a super ultra specific routine just doesn't 
happen. Like no, it just doesn't I, work. I, I really have not had like a, um, like a very regimented daily routine in, in probably five or six years. Are you content like, with that? Like, do you like that? Yeah. yeah. That, see that, that? That's cool. Cause like for me, it became like such a difficult thing to like come to terms with mm. and I'm getting better at it because I think it's like, it's funny. It's almost like living in LA and like working in like entertainment is almost like a balance in flexibility. Mm. It, it's like, how far can you like, like relinquish your day-to-day structure in terms of like if something comes up and there's an opportunity that arises yeah. on the day and you just d- didn't know it was going to happen just push everything else to the side and just make it happen and it's it, it's it's like a difficult thing to kind of kind of reconcile with i think yeah yeah i think um you know with with the kind of uh like routine and stuff i guess um i Definitely it's I mean It's all like I do have routines, but but it's almost like I'll get into a really ultra specific routine That's like applicable to whatever that period of my life is like it'll it'll be like every single day of my life will be the exact same for like Three months and then it becomes something else and you know (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and it kind of just depends on you know, like what what I'm working on at the time or or whatever I'm doing um, At that time, but yeah, I'm yeah I I, like I have friends and stuff where it's kind of like yeah, yeah, like I've been waking up at 9 a.m. at 9 a.m. for six years and like I go to the (laughs) office at 10 and then I eat lunch at 12 and then I go to the gym Monday Wednesday and Friday and like that's how it's been for half a decade and I'm kind of like respect you know, like that I, I like that I think yeah. that that's cool I don't do that and I don't really think that I could um but uh I I definitely respect the routine I find myself in a constant good. state of flux between being like terrified of having that like ultra specific routine like yeah. in, in in my darkest days it's like my biggest fear mm. but simultaneously <laughs> sometimes I crave it so it's like such a weird dichotomy yeah no I I find myself honestly really envious like a lot yeah. of like people that are just really regimented mm-hmm. um I think that there's there's something cool about that um like there's there's got to be something nice about just I was having a conversation with my friend on the on the telephone the other day and I was just kind of saying like he was it was funny because, like he works just like a like a nine to five office job. Yeah. And, um, he was saying how he was like jealous of my lifestyle and how I get to kind of hmm. decide what I do. And I was saying that I was jealous of his because he can go home at five and then like it's done. Like yeah. The, the day dissolve done. and relax. Yeah. Now you can do whatever you want, but then kind of like, you know, the, the other side of the spectrum, it's like, yeah, you have so much more freedom and, you know, maybe, yeah, I can just, just whatever I can schedule my days however I want. And I can prioritize my time in, in whatever sense that I see is like mm-hmm. appropriate. But then with that, it's such a double edged sword because yeah. it's kind of like, okay, well maybe there's, maybe there's, like a Wednesday or a weeknight that I don't want to be working on something at 11 PM yeah. or I don't want to be like coming home from a studio session at, at one in the morning, you know, or, or sometimes it you do, sometimes you don't. It's just like, yeah, it's a, yeah. It's almost like a, like kind of like what you said, it's almost like a, like a grass is not always greener on the other side type of thing. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. And That's it's, what he said. On the, yeah. He literally said on the phone, like the, like the grass is always greener kind of shit. And I was like, <laughs> was like wait, can, it, can we, can we curse on this? Yeah, go ahead. All right. That's, I didn't, I should have asked that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, he said that on the phone, like verbatim. And I said, you know, yeah, you're so right. You know? Like, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It, it, I kind of think of it in the same lens as I've always said this, like when it's summer, I say I'm a winter person and when oh, it's yeah. winter, I say I'm a summer person, you know, oh, yeah. it's yeah. like when it's beating hot outside, I'm like, damn, I hate the sunshine. Yeah. I want it to rain. But then when it's mm-hmm. raining, I'm like, damn, this sucks. I want it to be sunny outside. Yeah. And that just like eternal kind of like that just never ending struggle of just almost wishing the current moment away because you want the, you know, yeah, I, I'm the exact same way. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, when it's winter time, like, oh, it's getting dark so early, like, fuck this. But then in the summer, I'm like, I hate being sweaty all the time or not being sweaty. But like, I hate like I can't wear a jacket or like I I can't like wear like a good 
outfit or something. Yeah, I no, remember. dude, I totally feel that. I, w- I would imagine as a musician too, it's even more difficult to like live that kind of like life because it, the whole thing is like, I mean, especially with you, I want to ask you because like, it was interesting to me, like looking at your Instagram, look at all your stuff. It seems like you're, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't like assuming things about people, but it seems like to me, your artistry is very based on like albums. It seems like you're very much like an albums artist, you know, yeah. like you're planning the next project. It seems 100%. like you're a project guy. So it's like, I would 100%. ask you, when you live in that world where it's like you're not playing the singles game it's a, is it harder to kind of like have that mindset of like oh i'm always planning the next big thing because it's not like you're planning a single release you're saying you're planning an album release yeah. does that ever get difficult D- does it get difficult like planning out projects kind of in big chunks mm-hmm. honestly no i for me the opposite is what's difficult wow um like i've tried in the past like i've tried you know even like before I made this album that I just finished um, and like nothing's come out from it yet. Um, Like really this interview is like almost the first like interview of this like new albums era. Thanks man. It's kind of cool. It's an honor. Um, But um, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh yeah. Like before this album, I was like, yeah, like I'll try, you know, maybe I'll do five or six singles and they can all be like so different Mm -hmm. from each other. They can all be just like, and just mess around, you know, and just kind of see, you know, what might stick or or what might not or, or whatever. Um, and yeah, and I tried doing that and, and I, and I like completely failed. I like couldn't do Mm. it. You know, I I was, I was like, what about it was difficult. I don't know. It's just like, I just can't, it's just so hard for me to like, and who knows, maybe this will be a thing that I explore in the future. And like, I do learn how to do it that way for sure. Just cause it's, you know, a lot of people do it that way um, these days, but um, there's just something about it when something is just an individual piece and not mm-hmm. a piece of a whole, it's like hard for me to see the big picture with it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I totally understand like what you it, mean. Yeah. It's where, where, you know, instead if it's like, like the new album I have, it's long, it's way longer than my first two albums. Mm-hmm. And, and it's kind of like, it's, I love how long it is. And I love how like diverse the track list is and like how it just covers this really wide range of genres, like in a way different way than kind of my first two, like this album is really like a, a, a like departure, I would say. But, um, I love it that way because it's so e- it's it's like easier for me like even for example like and I don't want to like talk in circles about it but even like talk in circles about it that's the whole uh, well, for premise ex- of this do it dude yeah yeah and uh, like for example um when I make an album I'll the whole time I'm making the track list so it'll be like 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 I'll know that a song is like track three or whatever Mm -hmm. and then i'll be like okay well i want song four to be this mood like after we leave track three so you think about the songs in an album yeah 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 but like i don't have song four yet and now i'm literally gonna make song four based on song three Mm. um so like that and you know what i'm saying and and then just like with a single or just one little thing by itself it's just so difficult um you know because you you just don't have anything to, to put it to put it up against Uh whereas even like the way that i've always made my albums is i always produce them first and i make all the instrumentals and i all that for and i i write like i'll have a whole yeah like i have the whole album instrumentally finished and then i write it so interesting so you don't finish a song then move on to the next song no so so you're really make you're you're like in like you're literally crafting an album from yeah that's so i've never heard of anybody does like that yeah and that that's just it's it's just all, it's just literally the way that I've done it. Um, like I didn't, like, I didn't like, I don't do it that way. Like on purpose, it's just mm-hmm. always the way that I've been, I've done it. But, um, yeah. And, and just w- w- with a single, it's, it's just tough, you know, because you don't, there's no, like, I mean, there is of course, but there's no like overarching theme. Yeah. It's just like, it's just like a standalone thing. And something about that is like so difficult for me to like understand. Um, that's really cool. Yeah. I, I really, really respect that. And I think one thing that's really, really interesting, and I think really valuable about that is like, you know, like to me, a lot, a lot of your music feels like you're telling stories. You seem like a storyteller at heart. Yeah. And um, like, especially the whole Andy's Journey project really felt like when I, when I was listening to it, it really felt like, you mm-hmm. know, a moment 
in time. Yeah. And that's really yeah. what I love about like albums artists. It's For like, sure. I think it's a bit harder to translate that through singles, you know, but it's mm -hmm. like when you're an albums artist and you're putting out mostly like completed projects opposed to singles, yeah. you really are getting like different eras of this, this, this person. I think like the gleaming example of this, I think everybody would point to is Tyler. Yeah. You know, like Tyler ha doesn't really put out singles. Mm. He puts out albums and it's yeah. like the albums that he puts out are different eras, like mm. flower boy to Igor to call me if you get lost are like three different eras of the same person. And yeah. I've always found that very interesting because it feels like you're getting a complete, it's like, if you look at this person's full discography, it's like you're getting the story of them it's like these are different eras of tyler yeah yeah and and i and it's just it's funny you know that just like not all my favorite artists but almost all if i think of, if i were to say like who are my favorite five favorite artists of all time like probably three or four out of those five it's the same exact way mm -hmm. it's like I, I really can't think of an artist that i love so much where it's like they've made the same album six times but there's like yeah. a lot of great singles and stuff like it's it should and it's not that i like disagree with that model it's really it's really not that like i just i just don't you know it's just like i you know it, it just doesn't really register with me it um, works for you yeah like yeah. the fulfillment comes from telling a greater story yes totally yeah and then for me kind of like it even goes one step further where it's like yeah you know, you put out albums and, and uh, whatnot, but kind of the, um, to me, it's more so about when the project, when the artist project will be over, what, yeah. will, what will be the story of the albums, like album one to album to go Tyler feels 11 like, yeah. or whatever, you know, like that to me, that's like, that's the album is like you have a yeah. 12 album discography and like each album is like a song in that a chapter of your life 100% yeah. where it's like it's like the like the fucking like mega album you know yeah. like yeah it's like it, 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 it's like you know when you finish mu making music one day it's like all these projects will be like John's world yeah yeah mm -hmm. and, and i think that's it, really it'll cool just be, it'll just be like so satisfying to be like all right we're done like this is album 10 or album 11 and yeah, it's been fun. You know, like I hope you guys took something out of this. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. That's really, really, really cool. Mm -hmm. I think another thing that I can like kind of speak to is like not being too attached to your ideas. Mm -hmm. Like just, you know, like cause when you finish a full project, it's like you've been ha hankering on like a theme for like oh, yeah. a long time. So it's like, I'm sure, sure you, you finish it and you're like, I want to move on to the next thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that's one thing that really, uh, bugs me about, um, people that delete their old music. Mm, that, I, I think about this a lot, that actually. Shit, yeah. that, I, I don't like that. And and I understand um, people who have done that. They have their reasons, you know, like for sure. Um, Makes a lot of sense from a marketing perspective. Yeah. You know, it's like if, you know, maybe if you really changed up and, for sure. you know, it's and, and you and it, this music just does not really serve you at all in the sense of like it's just completely contradictory to maybe what you're trying to do now for sure but i think um yeah it kind of bugs me when people do that because i'm i'm kind of like to me it's the whole point of attraction is like what's the whole story mm -hmm. and it's like yeah maybe if you dropped uh, an ep maybe if your first release maybe it wasn't even an album maybe it was a single or it was a four song ep or whatever and like you know maybe let's say five or six years down the line, you're like, what was I doing? That was so shit. Like blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, like that's great though. Like that's, that yeah. it's like, that's what's I, good about I agree, it. Yeah. You know, like that. Cause like, to me, it's so cool. Like one of my favorite things it's, I can't even describe how satisfying it is to like d discover an artist and get so into them off like one album or whatever. And then yeah. you go to the catalog and you're like, holy fuck. Like, Album three is what got me into this yes. you know, group or a person or whatever. Like, and then you go to the first album and you're like, whoa, like this is album three, but it's so like rudimentary and it's so, like, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever listened to the um, band King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? A little bit. I, I, they're honestly, their discography to me is intimidating. It's so intimidating. Yeah. Like, they're like, don't they have like a hundred albums? It's damn near. Yeah. Dude, but they're like a gleaming example of that. Mm -hmm. They, that conceptually and even from like a genre stance fully reinvent themselves with like every new release to the point where it's like, it's incredible. Like that's how it should be. Yeah. You know, it's like, I think that, I think that there's not enough of that, um, being like encouraged today. Hmm. Um, I think, you know, I wish 
I wish there was more of that. Um, you know, I think it's a really interesting point because I fully understand like why people do it from like a branding perspective and a marketing perspective. To me, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. But also from like a more artistically integrity. Do, do what? Like evolve? No, no, no. Like delete the old music. Oh, oh I um, so I fully understand people do that from like that angle, right? Yeah. But I mean, there's that side of the coin, and then there's the side of coin, that, the side of the coin that you're talking about, mm. where it's like I think it's really, really cool when like you can see that progression in an artist. And I actually, if, I've, I've actually struggled with this when like I've thought about like deleting older interviews that I'm like not yeah. a fan of anymore. But then sure. it's like I love being able because I'm, I mean, now I'm confident in my ability to interview musicians. But it's like yeah. if I went back to interview one through ten, I hated the sound of my voice and I did the production I quality probably isn't awful. as good yeah but but that's like kind of why it's sick though yeah you know? exactly it's, it's that's what cool. i mean um like this video uh came in like my youtube recommended the other day and you know say what you will about like joe rogan mm -hmm. i'm not like a joe rogan stan some yeah. people like him some people don't that's your own prerogative but um this video it, it was it was like one of those like it was like it was like Watch Mojo or, or a channel like that, <laughs> yeah. like like a really just like vanilla ass like channel, just like about stuff. And, <laughs> about and it, stuff. And yeah. it was and it was called like the evolution of the Joe Rogan podcast or whatever. And and it's like it showed like episode one, and it was him in like his friend's house on like a wet on like a really shitty like two thousands webcam. <laughs> like imagine like really bad webcam yeah. quality and like the audio. It sounds you can't even like tell what he's saying, and he's like, "Hey guys, like." It's Joe Rogan, <laughs> like blah blah blah, and then it's just, you know what I mean, and it's yeah. like and it's like yeah, the production quality was at like the bottom of the it's like zero, yeah, yeah, and there was no format, it was no, it was just like him and his friend, like just like talking nonsense, you know. But then it's but like that's kind of that like to me, there's some beauty in that. That's very interesting, you know. Like it's cool, and it makes me respect someone or something that someone does way more when like the um the quality increase is completely palpable in in front of you you know oh, yeah. I, th I think that's really cool i think there's something kind of beautiful about that i fully agree another example i think that like it's another one of those people where it's like say what you will about him but like anthony fantano yeah if you oh, yeah. it's so crazy dude, his old videos from from like 2009 yeah yeah crazy oh, yeah, it, it, yeah. it's like i have a lot of respect let me say what you will about it. i'm not even a big fan of a lot of this stuff but it's like sure like, I, but I mean, no, but he's a great example. Yeah. He, he's been doing what he does for like over a decade. 12 years. Like, mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's crazy to me. Like, just yeah. to have that, like, wherewithal to stick with something that, like, yeah. I mean, at the time he was doing it, like, the, there's no reason why he should have saw potential in what he was really doing, you know? But it's like, yeah. he did, and he stuck it out. I have a friend who runs, like, a really, really awesome music scene that I'm a huge fan of, and um, it's really cool to go back and look at, like, the stuff that she was writing when she was, like, like really, really young. And then, it like, you watch her that matures with you as an adult, and you get yeah. older, and the, the vision expands. So, like, mm -hmm. I, I fully, fully understand what you mean. Yeah, totally. Are you somebody, I, I get the sense from you, correct me if you're wrong, but I feel like we're wired in this specific way, very similarly do you think in like lists and numbers um like in, in what sense because for me like when i talk, talk about this topic for example like i l i don't know what it is but like i love the idea of like youtube series or shows or like movies or like albums being like like for example like, like ranked not not even ranked but i just love the seeing the progression between like one and a thousand yeah and it's cool seeing like all the little mo middle moments in the middle yeah i i, I would i would say probably yeah um yeah love lists love numbers and progression and regression and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah. I love like like categorizing things mm -hmm. and, you know i love like it's just goofy as fuck but like i, I love like making like uh, like tier lists and shit like it's <laughs> like too, it's dude. fun you know it's be like Oh yeah, take like twenty albums from like take all the Beatles albums. Like, I love that shit. What yeah. albums are A tier? Like what albums are C tier? Like that shit to me, it's fascinating. And you get into like the intricacies of like why some of them aren't even comparable to yeah, other ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that, that I mean even to circle back to what you were saying about like albums, I think it's so cool that like when you do something like that, you can look at like where those albums, like for example, like the Beatles. It's like mm. all of their projects have like different periods of time. It's like you look at like the Mystery Machine era, and it's like. Mm. It's, it's almost like hard to compare that to like a white album because it's like when they were making mystery machine They were in India doing a bunch of like psychedelics right, So it's yeah. like mm -hmm. it's almost hard to compare because they were like arguably different people in different like Mental planes when they were making that project But then kind of when you get into like the more analytical side of like yeah. looking at those projects um, Like as individual pieces, you'll be like, oh, well 
like I see the DNA from this. Like, yeah, I can't compare these two albums, but I see the little like album X, you know, maybe it's completely unrelated to album Y, but like album X pokes its head out every now and then in, <laughs> yeah. in album Y and it and you just have to like look for it. You know? I love looking at that with artists and yeah. albums. Mm -hmm. Um as somebody who makes like full projects and you're very much like a like you said you're kind of like an albums artist, yeah. does it ever get difficult or frustrating when you're on one thing for too long and do you ever find yourself getting in the mindset of like a perfectionist? Yeah. Um I would say yeah. I, I think um I definitely am I'm a, I'm a perfectionist per, for sure. And I think the only way that I've found to like combat that, um, that works for me is just, is just put, put a cap on things mm. be like, all right, you know, this, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to start mixing this album December 1st and like whatever I mm. have to send, that's, what's going to be it, you know? Um, and of course, sometimes you have to adjust those things. And you know, yeah. it's like, if you get to December 1st and you have a dog shit album, like, okay, obviously, <laughs> obviously you'll re-examine that. Um, but I think, yeah, with the kind of perfectionism thing, I, I, I'm a big deadlines guy. I'm a big like scheduling, like, you know, that, yeah. I think that's really key actually, like giving yourself deadlines that might not actually exist. Like, yeah. And, and if, you know, of course it's like, yeah, all those things get ad adjusted and, and re-examined kind of like I'm saying, you know, just like depending on, you know, if you feel satisfied with whatever um, something might be. But I think um, perfectionism is good, on, but it can become so bad. Like I, I, yeah. I know I, I have a, like a decent amount of friends, honestly, that uh, like they are musicians, you know, and they want to release music, but they never have. And Me like, too, like, yeah. like, like, like I, I know people and, and that's fine. You know, like there's no shame in that. Like it's, you know, but what I'm saying is, is like, I like have met and seen so many people that have genuinely great musical ideas, but like it's their own self. That's like preventing those ideas from coming out because like to them, it's this like unattainable thing of like, yeah, like my, my first, you know, I'm going to start an artist project and like mm -hmm. my, my first release has to be like gold level like fire where you're kind of yeah. where you're kind of just like i mean you're you're, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure man because like if your first release is like the most perfect like epic thing on the planet like what about your second release like you know what's that gonna be that's so interesting that you, you say know? that one thing i think about a lot is like <laughs> you have your entire life yeah to make your debut oh yeah and then mm -hmm. if your debut does well because you put everything you've ever had into it. Mm -hmm. You have maybe a year to two years to make your so sophomore album. Yeah. Unless mm -hmm. you're Frank Ocean. Yeah. I mean, making my so making my sophomore album was like the hardest. I feel like, yeah, creative process wise, making my sophomore album was for sure the hardest thing ever. Why do you think that was? Just because I didn't really know what to do. Hmm. I didn't know what to do at all. Um, and I was very, and like, I, I love my sophomore album. Like I'm proud of it for sure. And I think it's, you know, it's a good project. Like I worked hard on it, whatever, but I did my first album has way more like magic in it because my first album, I was mm. completely diving off the deep end into a brand new style. Um, whereas my sophomore album is basically a continuation on my first album, the style of my first album, but like, it's just a little more strong in like a technical sense. Like I was better at engineering and better at like producing and stuff and, you know, and like maybe melody writing and shit like that. But, um, but I, but I didn't like my sophomore album. I just got very caught up in like, okay, because my first album in terms of like a career sense, um, my first album and the songs from that album is, is like for sure kind of what like put me on the map, I'd say. So it um, did well, yeah, like off reception. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause like before my, my first album came out in 2020, um, but before that I had like 12 or 13 songs out. Mm -hmm. Um, like I did two, two separate four song EPs in 2018. And then in 2019 I did like the singles thing, but I only did it. I only did like four singles and then I was like, oh, I don't really like this. I'm gonna make an album. Um, but yeah, the sophomore album was really hard cause I was kind of just like, I don't know what to do here. You know, it's like the mm -hmm. first album did so well. Do I just expand on that? But, and like, 
I feel like I should do that, but I don't really want to. And like, I don't know, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's like a, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you like, is this, I think it's interesting when you, so when you saw that, that success come from like that first project. Yeah. Obviously that's exciting. Obviously that makes you happy. Obviously that's, obviously that's fulfilling. Sure. Were those emotions more powerful than it being overwhelming? What do you like? What do you mean? Like was the, like for example, right? Like, you know, cause if you, you know, if you put out your debut project and it does well, there's a lot yeah. more pressure to do a second album that does just as well. Yeah. Was that pressure, like, do you think that's part of the reason why it was more difficult to make a sophomore release? Or was that pressure, like, in your mind at all? Or did it just excite you more? I don't know. I don't know. I honestly can't answer that. Um, like, I think the emotions that I felt after my first album came out were, like, really hard to describe. Because mm. I was, like, so proud and so relieved that it was out and so like happy that the whole process went well, but I was so like burnt out. Like, yeah. like I was like, I was like so energized, but like so depleted. Um, you know, so yeah, it was, it was a, it was like an interesting mix of emotions. Like a true double edged sword. Total double edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, it's kind of an interesting pattern that's like repeated itself. Is like after, Every album that I've made, so I guess this has happened. This pattern has repeated itself two times. Uh-huh. Um, but after, like, I've started, I've started a new album uh, immediately after the the whatever just comes out came out, and then that album gets to like whatever, and then like I just like scrap it all, it just be, just because it like didn't work. You know, like I'm trying Hmm. to like, I'm trying to like force myself to get back in it like too quick. Um, Was there a lesson in that though? Do you think you've learned from that? Oh yeah. Because that, those experimentations and like that whole process is ultimately what brings me to like the actual album. Yeah. That's what happened even this time around too. Like making the third one, like I started an album like my last, I haven't released music since June, 2021. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't released music in kind of a while. Um, and, um, yeah, like this album is going to be such a kind of big, like re entry. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I was, I was working on an album, um, in like mid 2021 to late 2021 and then like early 2022. And it was, and it just like, it, yeah, it wasn't like, it was fine. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't, it like, didn't feel right. It wasn't like the mind blowing, like thing that I wanted it to be. Mm, yeah, I, I, I can relate to that with a lot of projects that I've done. I feel like there's always, I mean, e- even in, in my in, in my field, like if I've done interviews or like, yeah. you know, I've done a video essay or like there's like a show I've thrown. It's like, there's always a feeling that you get mm. and that feeling tells, that, like that feeling doesn't, you really, have to have it doesn't it, yeah. lie to you. you it know? doesn't lie. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, um, and I think that that feeling is, is applicable to, um, a, a multitude of situations, you know, whether it's something you're creating or, you know, if you're entering a romantic relationship or, mm. or you're making a big decision financially or, or whatever. Um, I th- yeah, like if the, if, the, if like, if something's telling you that it's not working, like it's probably not working. Yeah. Um, that's a good way and, to put uh, it. Yeah. And, uh, I don't really know where I was going with that. But yeah. <laughs> so the, 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 the whole next project was that all made in LA. Mm. Was Andy's journey made in LA? Or no. was Cartoon Therapy made in LA? Yeah, no. N- um, I was still in college during the first two albums. Oh, so okay. Like I was in Nashville. So, oh, I see. So, where, 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 where did you go to school in Nashville? Uh, it's called Belmont. Is that like mm-hmm. a. No. Yeah, most people haven't. <laughs> <laughs> was that a very different experience making projects like while you were in school opposed to making a project in LA? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge. Huge. Um, huge. Were you, were you going to school for music? Or what were you going to school for? Um, I changed my major like, uh-huh. a lot. Um, like I studied, ultimately I graduated just in business and then I had a music minor. Mm. Um, but I started as a music major. Then I switched. I was like in, I was an audio engineering major for a while. And then I got out of that. Um, I switched a bunch. I was like a philosophy major for like three weeks. Wow. Like, like I was, I was like switching all over the place. Um, but then ultimately like I switched so much that I was like, 
you know what, like I'm already like two years deep into college. Like, let me just switch to be a business mate. Like if, if uh-huh. I'm, if I'm going to go, like I already knew that I was going to get out of college and then pursue music. Mm. So I was kind of like, I'm in college, like, and I'm halfway through. So I may as well get just like a really general degree that could like serve me well someday if I wanted to. You know? Yeah. If, yeah, I, yeah. if I ever was like, yeah, you know what? Uh, it's been cool to like make money off music and like live off that. But like, I'm just going to start doing this for fun now. Like, I just want to like go work for a company or something and like hang out with my girlfriend. Yeah. You know, like then wouldn't be such a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. I feel it, man. Yeah. And not to ask you to like reflect on your past in a bad way, no. but, um, I'm pretty like, you can ask really whatever you want. Okay, cool. Um, I, I just, I, one, one of my <clears throat> biggest pet peeves that people do in interviews is assume things about other, about their guests. I hate that. So I always try to not do that. But, sure. um, so you know, as somebody who like you went through school and then directly after that you moved to LA mm. to like pursue music fully. Yeah. Do you look back at your time in college as like an endearing period of your life or, oh, yeah. or do you wish that, are you happy you finished? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I loved college. I thought it was awesome. Um, I loved it because, you know, I really like, so I started this project in June, 2018. And were um, you making music under like different names before that? I had one name before that, uh-huh. um, and I made one album under that name um, when I was 17. And, like, in my, se- or no, I was, like, eight, 17 slash, like, 18. But it, it came out my junior my junior year of high school, so 2017. And that was your first, like, yeah. musical endeavor? Yes, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that album, it, it, it was just, like, that, that project was basically just known purely, like, locally. Um, like nothing ever really happened with it. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your question again? Oh, <laughs> oh now, now I forget. I asked you like four questions in one. Oh, it was like, like was college. And, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry. Um, but, yeah, and you uh, love college. Yeah. College was really cool because it, it gave me like, oh, this is where I was going with this. I apologize. You're good. Dude. Um, it's 1142 at night. You're allowed to yeah, lose your train of thought. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Um, but basically, um, yeah, so I started this project in in twenty uh, summer twenty eighteen, and I and the project was unknown, completely unknown. I would say f- for about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I, I like I was like how they have that little number of like listeners per month. It's it just says like whatever. It's, I, it's like I nine like, nine or whatever. I had, I had like f- I had like five hundred. Well, no, not even. Like I had like I had like a hundred for like eight months and then like at like at like a year and a half i probably had like like ten thousand or like five that like like jack shit like Uh i know nothing like it like after a year and a fucking half (laughs) i was like just i was like completely unknown which is like that just kind of shows that that was like a different era just because today you know it's like someone puts out a 20 second clip of like a demo and that makes them blow up overnight which is fascinating um, but then anyway, <clears throat> my point was, is that just, yeah, with this project, like it was unknown for a while. Um, and then it was kind of that, you know, like I, I had some kind of like traction with stuff before my first album, you know, kind of here and there, but really my first album is, is my first album is like what allowed me to like earn money and stuff like that uh-huh. in, in like a way that I could live off. Um, and, um, yeah. And, but that's why I loved college though that time period because it was like I I I like was making money as a full time musician. That's really cool, yeah. But I like wasn't a full time musician. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like I loved being like, oh I could go to Thanksgiving dinner with my whole family and like to them I'm a student. Like I'm not a full time musician yet. But you're making money off it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it was cool because it's like, you know, I, I can like I can just like be chill and like everyone knows that like I'm having success at what I'm doing but I also don't have to like have fucking, you know, aunt, aunt Lisa, like look at me (laughs) with her head cocked sideways. So I was all music thing going. Like, oh, like, like, you dropped out of school for the music thing. You're like an artist, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I still got to have this (laughs) this almost like disguise of like normalcy, Uh which I love. That's cool. Um, which I totally loved. Um, and then, yeah, it's like graduating college. It was like a really interesting thing for me because I was like, all right, well that like that, like protection is like over now. Yeah. Like now this is fully me. 
which is cool but scary um and that was like a, yeah it was cool but scary you know um yeah was that a um when you were in college like opposed to now was that ever like a struggle I would assume not for you because you finished school and then directly after you finished school, you're making full-time money off music. Was, was what a struggle? Like the family balance with you being a musician? I guess not, right? Because you no. never like, because you had that, like you said, like disguise of normalcy. Yeah, man. It's like I, I was in college. I was pursuing my degree. I, you know, I always was a really good student. Like I just, I got really good grades and like, I just like did my thing and my parents never really needed to ask any questions. Um, so it was just like, it was, it was chill, you know? That's so um, cool. Yeah. So you have that that first album. It's not doing very many numbers, but were you taking music seriously at that that point? Like, were you trying to make it, you know, do well? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was all, I was always taking it very seriously. Like, uh -huh. I, I remember even like, <clears throat> I didn't. I've always been like really. I like just everyone says that I'm just like a fucking like old man in like a 22 year old, 23 year old body. I can see that. And just like, I've always been very like adverse to whatever the kind of current technology is. <laughs> so like, I didn't have any streaming platforms. I didn't have Spotify or Apple music or anything until I was 19. Um, I, I didn't have any of that. And I remember like, like I was like really, I was releasing music. Like I had music out and I didn't have any, like I wasn't using streaming services at all. And then, so I was kind of like, okay, like, I, I don't understand these services really whatsoever. You know, it's like, I, I, I have to like, so I subscribe to Spotify. Like, <laughs> like I, I put out a couple EPs and I was like, okay, well, I'm kind of just making this music and just like dropping it into like the fucking the like, like black hole, like, and just like, just kind of being like, all right. Um, but yeah, then I got that shit and I was like, okay, I, I need to like understand this, this app. Like I need to like get this. It's know? cool that you got that so early because a lot of people yeah. drop music into the abyss forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You, you know, like, so where, yeah. where, where did that first bit of success come from? Was it TikTok or playlisting? Like, where do you think you found TikTok, that first? TikTok really wasn't a thing back then. I guess not. Um, uh, what was that? 2019, 2020? It was like 2019. Okay. Yeah. And like, I don't have a TikTok. Um, I'm actually like for this new album, I just like found some kid to like do it for me and I'm just going to like pay him to do it. Wow. That's really interesting. That Cause I, cause I don't want to do it. Like but I, but the, the thought of like, you, I don't know why the thought of you not having TikTok so crazy to me, it shouldn't be crazy to me, but like nowadays it is, you know? Well, that's the thing is I was like the fact that I don't have a TikTok right now is like so stupid. Like a little like bit. I, it, right yeah it is like don't it's not even a little bit like nah, it's, it it's dumb you're right it's literally like me not having a tiktok at this point after being fucking 40 million plays in or some shit it's like it's like to be making, honest with you it's incredibly impressive to me that you you got to this point without one but it's just it is stupid though like it is it and, is and it's like and it's yeah it's almost this thing of like being like the like I don't know. I always think about medieval times. Like imagine medieval <laughs> times, like, like the town blacksmith, he's making like swords and armor and yeah. shit. It's like being, or being like some sort of like merchant and being like, yeah, I make a living making these items, whatever they may be, but I don't sell them at the marketplace with everyone else. I, oh, you have, you have to like know about me and come directly to me to get what I, to get my, you know, my custom made fishing rods or what you know what i'm saying like, it's like that really good sandwich shop in a town that's probably like 30 yeah. minutes away from where you grew up but, but there's you knew no about advertisements yeah. there's no billboards they're closed five days out of the week yes yes that's like what have that's like what being like a fire ass musician but not having a tiktok is like <laughs> yeah and you're kind of just like all right what the fuck am i doing here it's kind of kind of dumb but that's goes back to what i said about like i've just kind of i've always been very slow to like Ex, not accept, but almost just understand like the current technology. Um, you know, like I still don't understand TikTok at all. I yeah. don't, I don't use it. I, don't, I bet it's difficult, man. Um, and it's not that I like dislike it or think it's dumb. I just, I just don't really, I, you know, there's, there's just a lot of things to me where I'm just kind of like, I, I get why this is popular and I get what people are doing on it, but I just like, don't, I, I just don't really want to you know, mm -hmm. join that conversation, you know, just because it's, it's already going, that conversation is already going well without me being in it, mm. you know, and it's, and it's fine. Um, do you have management? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I do. Um, but it's like, yeah, I like, I'm very like hands-on with like, mm -hmm. the, like I'm almost like a manager of it. Makes I mean, sense. I, yeah. I don't, it's hard to explain. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. But, um, 
Yeah, I do. I do have like an infrastructure of uh, people around me that like work on the project. Yeah. Where? Okay. Okay. So let's circle back. Where did that first level of success like come from? Like, or was it very much organic streams? Did you get playlisted like in the beginning or what was happening? Yeah. So like, like I was kind of saying before my first album, I had like, I did two, the two four song EPs uh-huh. and then I did, you know, three or four singles and it was, it was pretty much organic. Um, Wow. It was pretty much organic. And then I had one song that I put out in 2019. Um, that was like my first time getting like playlisted or whatever. Um, it's kind of funny how like the, the playlisting like economy, it's like, it's like the new equivalent of like getting your music video on MTV. Exactly. In, like, yes. I, I make that conversion all the time. Or like, you know, you, oh, I, I, the radio station, like pick me up. Like, you know, they, they <laughs> I got on fresh finds. They played yeah. my demo seat, you know, whatever it's, it's, it's funny, but, um, yeah, the first song that I got, I, I got a song playlisted in 2019 on like a really big playlist. That was your um, first, or, or so that, that, that was before that wasn't your on a, Yeah, that wasn't okay. on an album yet. Yeah, and um, that was kind of it. Um, and, you know, that it didn't like blow me up. Like playlisting doesn't blow you up for shit nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, like playlisting doesn't even really do anything nowadays. A year ago it would, but yeah, you're right. Now yeah. it's, you got to be like on yeah. the editorials. I mean, it's, yeah. of course it still does, but but it's, yeah. it's like, it's, it's a lot more difficult now. Right. And um, yeah, so that happened. And then I was kind of like, oh, you know, all right, that's, that's nice and all, um, you know, for sure. It's just another step in the right direction. Like, you know, and then, yeah, I made my first album. Um, and then it's funny because I made the, and this, so then I made that album, Mm -hmm. uh, in late 2019. Um, and then I released it in like the first half of 2020. Um, yeah. And it was funny because I was like about to quit entirely, like right before the album, I was about to start releasing music from it. I was about, I was just going to quit music and just like stop everything. And, but then I put the first song out and now like, it was funny. Like I was like, Oh yeah, the song's literally coming out tomorrow, and like I'm definitely gonna quit music. Like I, this, kind of, this kind of sucks. And then that now that song is my most popular song. Why did you want to quit music? I don't know. It's just kind of I just kind of wasn't really having a great time doing it. Uh-huh. Like I, I wouldn't have quit music per se. I would have kept making music, but I, I, I like I say fun. I say quit music from the. Um, you wouldn't have played the game anymore. Yeah, the stance of like I'm not trying to like mm. make this ship sail. I'm yes. just gonna go sailing. For fun you know it's kind of a beautiful analogy yeah yeah um it's funny that you, you called it I don't, I don't remember exactly what you said but i, I always call them uh one thing i say a lot is the two pillars of the new attention economy is something yeah, i say yep, a lot yep, 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 it, yep. it's tiktok and playlisting mm-hmm, yeah if you're yeah. a musician it's like those two yeah. things are you know if you look at all of the and and it's really just the same you know people act like you know it kind of irritates me or not irritates me but it, it like perplexes me when people will be like, oh, like TikTok and the playlist and, you know, it's it's ruined music and it controls everything and blah, 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 blah. But it's kind of like these are really the same systems that have always been in place. Just yeah, with like they a, haven't just changed with a new paint job. Yes. You know, it's like it, it was it was like, you know, being an unknown artist in 1989 was hard, too. It's always been hard and it always will be hard. It's interesting um, because like in, it, it, it's funny because I had my opinion uh, on what you just said was direct in direct opposition to what you just said in 2020. Yeah. But now my opinion is totally with you because w- it's like, w- what, what on opinion? TikTok specifically because oh, yeah. it's very interesting to me because I remember when TikTok first came out and there were musicians blowing up off it like in 2020 and it was like people were shitting on it like in that moment and where my head was placed was at was at that time anyway. Yeah. Was like I think TikTok, to, at least back then I did. I, I, now my opinion's a little bit different, but I think then I thought TikTok was an amazing thing for music because it felt like yeah, every, like, it was like all these artists, all these bedroom pop artists that are like blowing up out of like their bedroom making music on like however they're doing it. It's like, they're blowing up because people like it. It's not mm-hmm. like they're blowing up like inorganically. It's like these people who are blowing up because people are rewatching their videos. And if that can like bring attention to some like unsigned artist in like Kentucky, yeah. I think that's a beautiful thing. Now I think it, it is too. It, now it's not like that because labels have got a hold of TikTok and it's it's no longer organic. But like in yeah. a world where TikTok was like this independent entity mm. and it's like it was, was like completely uncontrollable. I think it's I, th- I um, think it was beautiful that it was uncontrollable. Yeah, it sucks I, that it is now. Yeah, and um. Yeah, it, it was interesting for me because I was just kind of watching it as an outsider. And I, yeah. I was just kind of choosing to not participate in it. 
Same but, man. But I wish was, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. But you know, then then it was funny because it's like, yeah, everyone. You know, I had like just I knew a lot of people that were like really blowing up on tick like off their TikTok or whatever mm-hmm. in 2020, and then it's like 2020 is like the year 2020 is what totally put me on the map popularity wise, and like I I like wasn't really in that like system like at all. Um, yeah, it was kind of bizarre. That's so interesting because I guess you were among the last of like a dying breed, really. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I really, yeah, I think kind of, uh, yeah, it's it, and and now I think we're kind of just in this like the era we're in now is really weird. It, oh yeah, I agree. Like musically, post like, TikTok, post COVID, like yeah. it, it's in the state of like limbo. We're we're what's the next thing? Yeah, it's it's almost like there's like it's it almost feels like there's no rules again. True. As it, as it felt to me kind of back like 2017, 2018, 2019, but now it feels like there's like no rules again, but like the roadblocks are much higher than mm. it used to be. I don't know if that makes like it, to me. It, it, A it bit all, more gay kept. Yeah. It, it, fe- it feels like the the like roads to getting yourself out there or like the roads to success or whatever are as wide open as they've ever been. But the roads are in like the poorest condition they've ever been in, Mm. you know? Yeah. There's 80 roads you could take now, but they're all covered in potholes. Whereas like a couple (laughs) of years ago, there was like 40 roads you could take or like, or like 10. They were in great condition. They were very well kept. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's interesting. Cause now it's so wild to me how TikTok fully changed the industry. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it, it, it was like, it, it was like Willy Wonka was giving out golden tickets for a little yeah. bit for a solid six month period. Anybody oh, yeah. with a, with a nose and two eyes got a golden ticket. Yeah, but man. now it's like you to, to blow up on TikTok now. It, it, it's not that easy, man. Like, mm-hmm. like it's pretty fucking difficult now. And yeah. it's like, it's so crazy how easily stuff went viral when that, when it first started and almost makes no sense. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Um, it's really weird. And, and it just makes, I, I think I really do believe like maybe certain people would think that I'm being too optimistic or something, but I, I, I do kind of just sense a feeling in the air that we are kind of either we've already entered it or we're slowly entering it or like you know, it's going to be a gradual process or whatever for a while. But I think, um, I think we're kind of like in this era again where stuff is like, is, is going to be way more kind of organic and like word of mouth based. Mm-hmm. Um, like just because a lot of those metrics, you know, online that are inflated, you know, by like this, that or, or whatever, it's like, if you take an artist, you know, and even just like, I, I hate like discussion of that whole like monthly listeners term, Yeah, right? but it's just like, if you take an artist who has 500,000 monthly listeners, there's not 500,000 people that knows who that person oh, is. Yes. I, I talk there's about probably, lot. there's probably 25,000 people that know if who that, that person yeah. If that. Yeah. Like I had a friend, um, <coughs> I had a friend, um, and he is like really big on Spotify. Like, mm-hmm. we're, like we're talking like three to four million monthly listeners. Um, and he had a show in LA <laughs> and he couldn't sell 20 tickets. I know, dude. And I was kind of like, whoa, like that's, that's so crazy. weird. Like that's so weird because there are artists with 20,000 monthly listeners. They're selling that, out that shows. Are selling, you know where 10,000 of those 20,000 are buying a ticket. I always say like, when I talk about this, I always say it's the difference between a listener and a fan. Yeah. A list like you have to be a listener to be a fan, but very few listeners are fans. Right. You know, it's like, cause there's so much passive listening these days. Yes, you yeah. Know? It's like if you're on a playlist or whatever and you, and you know, it's like, it's like, Hey, you're on, you're on like John Johnson's like great songs to cook dinner to. Playlist. <laughs> it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. Right. It's like someone's going to turn that shit on and be like, oh, yeah, this song is cool. Next. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, they're not going to go like bump your whole album. And um, Spotify will give you one hundred and ninetieth of a cent for it. Mm-hmm. But it's like, <laughs> what does that mean? You yep, know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's it's definitely a really interesting era where it's like it's it's like as easy as it's ever been to like access the masses, but it's as hard as it's ever been to like get their attention. Have you ever heard um, of the concept of a thousand true fans? 
Is that like the thing where it's like if a, if a thousand people give you like a hundred dollars a year, you get a hundred thousand dollars? Essentially, like, yeah. but 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 it's but when it translates to music, it's kind of based on the idea that like if you have a thousand fans, right? And and you know the definitions for a fan, I got to be very very specific, right? Yeah. It's like a fan is going to see you they're, every they're every time shit. you come to your yeah. city when you drop merch, they're buying it, they're going to buy your record, you know, they're going to they're going to buy your vinyl, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's a fan. If you can get a yeah. thousand people to do that, you have a career in art for the rest of your life. No, yeah, I have a I have a list of um like a really big part of my uh, project. It it wasn't forever just because I wasn't like I didn't have like the resources to do it forever mm -hmm. but like a big a big part of uh like i guess my business or whatever is like is vinyl um and like yeah it's uh, interesting yeah and and like i have this list of and I, i've i've put out like merch items and vinyl i've probably done maybe like 10 or 10 to 12 like merch releases uh -huh. um where it's like oh a t-shirt's coming out or a hoodie or a vinyl or whatever um yeah, and I have like this list of people where there, there's probably like 150 or so people that have bought every single item, and to each wow. to each person that totals out to like 400 bucks a fucking person. Where it's like, I look at myself, and I'm like, I am that person for someone else too. Mm. Like, there's artists where I've spent, I've bought everything. Me too. Like, Me too you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, there's artists that I like. I have a huge record collection, and there's like. There's artists, yeah, where they have 10 albums and I own every single one at $30 a pop. That's like Mario. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with no. like, with what Mario, like Mac, you, 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 every Mac album, right? But you have like most of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and like those, you know, if you kind of want like a career and like career from like art or whatever you do creatively is definitely different than like fulfillment creatively. Mm -hmm. But like, if you want a career quote unquote, if you want to like feed yourself off of like what you make or whatever, you know, those are the people that you got to get. Yeah. No, and they're hard to get, but you can't get them with enough like wherewithal, you know? Yeah, of course. And it's like, that is a fan. That's not a listener. Yeah. It's, it, I, I think that, you know, that, that is like, kind of a sad reality to like face but it's like really what, important what like the idea that like, you can have like two million monthly listeners but like no 200 fans. 200 fans you know yeah. but it's like it's a very 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 real thing oh yeah. yeah um okay so moving into this next project so i i kind of like gathered themes from like uh, uh, to me it's it's in my cartoon therapy had a very much a theme and then the, the 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 newer project Andy's journey like really really seemed like it had a theme to me like uh, correct me if I'm wrong mm. but to me it really felt like exploration of you yeah like in a lot mm. of ways like like a lot of the songs I felt like you deal with different emotions etc yeah is there like a big big thematic sense on the new project like yeah. is there very much a theme to it oh yeah do you want to go into it a little bit or do you not want to spoil it I mean I don't really give a fuck at this point <laughs> I'll talk, yeah it's fine yeah I mean like this project so like so like the Andy's journey. It, that's actually like not an album like so like my first album is called apocalypse wow uh -huh. and then my second album is cartoon therapy and uh -huh. andy's journey is the two albums combined oh is that what it is mm -hmm. oh yeah so it's like because basically kind of the way that i created those albums was like a not a part one part two but kind of like a it, they're they're like brother and sister albums they're, it's just like, it's like um, a greater th a whole yeah. greater story yeah so then andy's journey is basically those two albums stacked on top of each other with uh -huh. like little like skit interludes that like tell the concept of it um and, and like it's very story driven like it's kind of about this like character and like all this stuff happens and like whatever and it's like it's very much like a fictional story that is like based off just like stuff that i've experienced in real life but then it's kind of but then it's kind of like you know all dramatized up uh -huh. you know like there's like there's all this goofy shit about like aliens and like time travel and like just just like just garbage um and uh yeah, you know, but um, the new album, it's very like this album is almost like like the anti album to like everything I've made, but in like such a positive sense. Um, like if you think about like, you know, I, I know that, you know, Mr. Kanye is, is a hot topic these days. Um, hot with a capital H. Hot with a capital H. But for example, like he made the Yeezus album. Uh huh. And that album was like the anti album to all of his albums, but it was like negative. And it was like, fuck this. Like I'm taking a left turn because like, fuck all this, you know, but like this new album for me, it's almost that, but like in like a happy sense, if that makes sense. Do you, you mean like 
are you um, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but does that mean like you're kind of taking things that you learn from the other projects yeah. and then like yeah. you know it's, you're like, like evolving? It's, it's a major evolution and like departure from everything, but it's like celebrating what brought everything to that point. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah. What do you think are the biggest things you've learned for the past projects that you've kind of like evolved on in this new one? I don't know. I th I think I think I just like really. It, it sounds like such a non answer, but I, I really, I really kind of just like stopped caring about everything mm -hmm. in the sense of like this new album is, is definitely very, it's not risky in the sense of like, it's inaccessible, but it is risky for me in the sense of like, I'm trying like more new things than I've ever tried. Um, and stuff that I've always wanted to do and stuff that I wanted to do, for example, on my second album, but I just was too scared to do it yeah um, you know but yeah I, I just yeah you know to go back to what you said uh your original question like the third album definitely uh it is very thematic but it's much more raw in its themes it's much more like honest it's much yeah yeah I, I i don't know how to really explain it but it's much more just like like naked if that makes mm. sense it's you know it's it's talking about kind of like more like intense topics but not like shoving them down your throat mm -hmm. whereas like my first two albums all the lyrics like the lyrical style to this new album is very different than my first two albums because like my first two albums are very like blunt with like what they're saying you this know? one's more metaphorical way more metaphorical yeah oh wow mm. are the concepts like are the concepts that you're like you craft these metaphors about are they similar concepts to the other two projects or are you no. really trying you're covering different stuff yeah i think really what this project how it kind of happened was like a couple things like happened to me like in my personal life in the past like year while making this project that like i never had experienced anything close to these things and like it really th this album covers topics that i've never covered before because like I didn't have any reason to cover those topics. If, mm. I, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. That's so interesting. I, I think it goes back to the whole, like, this is something I, I've talked to Lars about. It's like, you can't become inspired to when I, your life is the same. Yes. And that's exactly. why I was kind of to, to go back. Like, that's kind of why I was dissatisfied afterwards with my second album. Cause I was like, I'm writing about the same shit as the first album. You weren't having new experiences new has happened. Probably like, because you were making so much music, you know? Like, yeah, like I'm still in college. I'm still hanging with the same exact seven people doing the same exact things. I still live, you know, in the same neighborhood. I'm still like dating the same girl that I've been dating for like four years. Like nothing has changed. And like how, like, I, and, I, and I don't know like what to talk about, you know, because I, I don't have anything to talk about really. Um, where it's kind of like, okay, I guess I'll just go back to the first album and try and just un, like turn over some more stones that maybe I forgot to turn over mm. you know, like that kind of shit. And it's difficult too, because it's like, you can't like manufacture the experiences you want to write about. No, they just got to happen. You they, know, yeah, they have to happen. Um, and it's like, I went through like a writer's block for like a year and a half after my second album came out and I didn't make jack shit. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like this album, this is my longest album, easily my best album from like the people that have heard it. And it was made the quickest because wow. like because like all these experiences like just like they fucking came and came and came you know so it was just like it really that is true like the life experiences and kind of like what you go through in life like it can totally like it can completely charge you yeah um if those experiences are are positive or negative or neutral or, or whatever like what happens to you in your day-to-day -day life um and just kind of your life in a grander scheme uh bigger picture kind of sense it can totally fill you with like stuff to do you said you're 23 right yeah do you think that when do you turn, when do you turn 23 i turned 23 um october do you think like the year of you being 23 was like a much more transitional year than like 21 and 22 the most transitional year of my life by ten thousand miles yeah. that's yeah. In, in, in a good way no no well yes but in it, but the good didn't come from good experiences. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Completely. Yeah. That's always a strange thing because sometimes mm -hmm. 
bad experience. Well, sometimes the good experiences don't teach you as much as the bad experiences, you know? Yeah. And it's difficult to put like a positive. They usually spin don't. They yeah. usually don't. Like usually to me, like I, I get my creative inspiration, like from bad experiences, honestly. Mm. And then you turn that into like something that feels good. Um, you know, wow. it's like, it's kind of like that. That's a lot of my music. Honestly, like if you look at a lot of my lyrics, like they're pretty dark, um, you know, but like the music is like very like blissful. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Do you struggle to write about happy times? Um, yeah, yeah, because I don't really want to as much because when like, like happy times, for example, you want to be living the happy times, I'm just living it. Yeah. You know, like I'm just like chilling, like, you know, usually when I'm like happiest in life and when I'm like most content and most just like relaxed and comfortable, that's usually when I'm the least creatively motivated Hmm. um, for sure. Yeah. That's so interesting because then it's like you empirically look inside then it's like, yeah, ah, it, it's such a weird relationship. I find that like, you know, I have this with art that I make, like I have this with, with my writing, I have this with all kinds of things, but it's like, it's so difficult that sometimes the most creative periods of your life are the bad ones because then it's like, you get kind of stuck in this cycle where it's like, it's yeah. difficult to be creative when you're happy Yeah, and you don't want no, to be totally. like, you don't want to be miserable, you know, yeah. but it's like, sometimes the best creativity art to me is just like energy that's pent up inside that has to, yes. has to go out, you know, it has to be like expelled from you, you know? Um, yeah. And just like happiness is like a natural act of, expulsion of energy from you I, I that's at least how i understand it um you know yeah that's very true yeah mm. but you think like the new project you said are it, it are the emotions that you kind of are expressing on them are they so you said like you know 20 you know 23 wasn't all that of a positive year for you mm. I, it, it was but it was but it wasn't it's it was a bizarre year um the weirdest year for but sure. the themes are really addressing all that yeah mm. that's cool man yeah i'm fucking hyped to hear it, brother yeah totally. here, here's some yeah. more happy times yeah no yeah i like but that's like the thing that was so cool about it it was like i was writing about i was writing about and like motivated by all these negative things that happened to me but like it made like my album that i'm by far the most like proud of you know and like that made me so happy and that hmm. made me so like you know what i mean and it almost yeah. like and it almost like makes you look back on like experiences that have you know maybe been negative or so, and you're kind of like dude like a bit that, more fond of that, that yeah yeah right yeah you know it's like yeah, yeah. and I, I think that can be as true for music as it is for just lessons in life you know it's like there's all kinds of really really negative experiences to look back at my life mm. and i'll look back at those negative experiences and i'm like damn that was awful mm. but i am such a better person because oh of it. yeah no i mean yeah just really even to some of the stuff that i've had to experience in the in the past year or so has really like really changed me as a person in like a very very positive way um i think a lot of issues that i was having on a personal level were like solved by like having to confront mm. certain things that i never had to had never had to go through you know if that if that makes sense yeah, it's, it's almost like a process of self confrontation. Yeah, totally. it's like accessing these, or I, I guess acknowledging these things, and they're difficult within yourself and in your life, and these problems, and like yeah. admitting that they're real. Oh yeah, it's a difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. But dude, yeah, I'm happy to hear the new project, man. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you for chopping it up and talking about it, dude. I'm yeah. very excited for to see what comes next from you. Oh, last thing I want to ask you though, like if mm -hmm. you could take this new album. And have it have one overarching message that it spreads to people who listen to it. What would you want it to be? Um, if it had one overarching message, it would probably be like, I don't know. I feel like that's a question where like, I'm going to say something right now. And then like, mm. I, I would think of something better later. So maybe this isn't the most like accurate thing to say, but I just the the just thought that comes to me just like on a whim right now on just like a twitch reaction is just like you are like at your most kind of powerful and you are at your most like just your most strength as a person when you can kind of just like like realize that i don't know i maybe like 
the the message of like really positive like nihilism mm. like realizing that nothing really means anything and so that, anything and that can there, mean everything there really are no repercussions to anything and because of that like that's great you know it's like you should be happy that like we'll all be dead in like 80 years you know <laughs> yeah. like you should be glad for that because you know it you know what i'm saying like i, I, do. I think that's kind of the the point i guess is just kind of like the meaninglessness of life and the meaninglessness like it seems like it's so difficult to explain and rationalize like pain we experience or mm. bad events that uh, come on to us or whatever but like the ability the, the, the because we can't rationalize them like that is the rationale it's like life can mean life means nothing. Yeah. And therefore that's life can what, mean anything. Yeah, that's what it means is that it means, you know, yeah. Yeah. I think you, yeah, you get what I'm saying. I'm, I kind do. Of, I'm kind of talking in a circle. Talking in a circle, but, dude. But yeah, I, I would say that like positive nihilism, like this, just like who the fuck cares. But because of that, like I know that I'm going to be fine. Beautiful. Um, Hell yeah, dude. I'm super happy to hear it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for talking, man. That's a fun conversation. Of course, of course. Tell yeah. them um, where they can listen, where they can follow you, where they can stream your stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, you could just Google Huron John, it's H-U-R-O-N, and then John. Um, yeah, everything's online. I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, the new album, it'll be out. Um, it should be out by like August or September. Um, and it's long. It's a double album. Um, I'll be playing some gigs later this year and that's kind of it. Let me know, dude. I'd love yeah. to, I'd love to attend. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. For sure. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Cool. Yeah. Music matters. For sure.